Hi, I'm Nathan Fluster. Uh, my background is in music analysis, or what we call music theory, but I also have interests in psychology and the brain and music's interaction with that. Uh, my research focuses on music, the analysis of music that depicts dreams, mental illness, and trauma. And today I'd like to talk about uh, those things with popular music. When we analyze a piece of music, we look at different aspects of the piece. Uh, we look at the melody, the harmony, the rhythm, and the form. Uh, the text and the author of the text and music, the author's background and the cultural context. And within that, the importance of looking at mental health uh, cannot be understated. Music can be and often is seen as a window into the human psyche. In fact, in a recent interview with the BBC, Ed Sheeran referred to songwriting as, quote, a form of therapy, end quote. Uh, rap and hip hop have not, however, uh, historically addressed a therapeutic perspective. Um, African American therapists have noted this aversion, citing along with other reasons a lack of cultural awareness and racial bias amongst the therapists and uh, the larger medical professions. Um, Prince Paul, better known um, from his work with De La Soul, uh, released a solo album in 1997 called Psychoanalysis, What Is It? I read that and I was like, that's a rap album? Interesting. Um, so I bought two copies. Um, it represents a change from this aversion towards something I call therapy rap. However, it's really kind of a negative critique of the therapeutic process. Eminem's works uh, give us a larger corpus uh, to study for the therapeutic process and you can trace transformations um, like, for example, with his misogynistic tones early in his work, uh, the song Kim is very violent and blames Kim for uh, ills in their relationship, but a recent song called Bad Husband, um, in that song he takes total ownership of his of mistakes in that relationship, so that's interesting. Uh, Kendrick Lamar's 2015 album, To Pimp a Butterfly, has two great examples in it. The song You talks about suicidal thoughts with emotional th uh, sobbing. And later in that same album, the song I uh, more confidently declares, I love myself. Um, that's the main line from that song. Mike Shinoda recently uh, released an album called Post Traumatic that discusses him dealing with Chester, his bandmate from Linkin Park's uh, Chester Bennington's suicide. And the rapper Logic, uh, in his song 1-800-273-8255, quite literally raps the number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Um, in another vein, the music of the Dave Matthews Band also has therapeutic tones. Um, early in, and also deals with trauma, early in 1994, Dave Matthews' sister Anne was murdered by her husband in South Africa. Later in that same year, they released the album Under the Table and Dreaming, which is dedicated to the memory of Anne. Um, the songs on that album were written before Anne's death, so they're not about Anne, but they recorded the album afterwards, so that certainly was on their minds and influenced the recording of that album. On that album and also on throughout the Dave Matthews Band's works, uh, he has different timbres, vocal timbres that he use, uses that I uh, jokingly refer to as Happy Dave and Sad Dave. Happy Dave is the lighter, normal uh, tone of Dave Matthews' voice, but there's also a Sad Dave tone that's growly and sometimes ghostly and airy. Um, songs that re reflect Happy Dave uh, from Under the Table and Dreaming are Ants Marching, one of their biggest hits and love songs like Lover Lay Down. Uh, Sad Dave songs are like Rhyme and Reason that dwells on inner psychological turmoil and talks about death, actually a common theme in the music of Dave Matthews Band, which you wouldn't expect because it's fairly happy music. Uh, from that same album, the song Warehouse actually deals with both Happy Dave and Sad Dave and uh, vacillates back and forth, making it a really great song to study for the therapeutic uh, wrestling of emotions and trauma in that. Uh, that song deals with the finality of life as well as the image of a warehouse as psychological walls are both built up and broken down. The album basically accepts an opening challenge that Dave gives to himself, quote, Hey, my friend, it seems your eyes are troubled. Care to share your time with me? Would you say you're feeling low? And so a good idea would be to get it off your mind." End quote. Finally, uh, one more therapeutic tome or trauma tome is the music of Tori Amos, who's a classically trained pianist turned indie rocker. Um, she often discusses traumatic experiences in her music. Perhaps her best known example is the song Me and a Gun, 
from her album Little Earthquakes that is a pretty poignant and difficult to listen to description of a rape early in her career. She also frequently addresses her religious background and trauma that she experienced from that religious trauma and uh, religious background in her music. Uh, therapist Marlene Wendell has explored the idea of religious trauma syndrome, which other psychological re uh, literature uh, calls a subset of post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, from her 1994 album, Under the Pink, the song Icicle expresses just such a religious experience. It describes Amos' inner struggles between her uh, sexual impulses and the church's restrictions on those impulses. The instrumental introduction to that song portrays the church and her religious background by setting the hymn over the thousand tongues to sing. And that's a significant song because it's the first hymn in the United Methodist hymnal, which is the denomination that her father was a minister in. So it's uh, definitely a personal song for her. In, in that song, the hymn is set against dissonant chords that pound against and disrupt the strains of the hymn as uh, Tori Amos goes through this kind of musical therapeutic process in dealing with her uh, struggles and trauma from her past. Each of these three areas, what I call therapy rap, uh, the music of Dave Matthews Band, and also the music of Tori Amos, offer a slightly different glip, glimpse into the representations of mental health issues in popular music. They're all going to hopefully end up in a, a monograph that I'm working on called The Dark Side of the Album. And also I write about this regularly, shameless plug, um, and uh, uh, the Institute for the Medical Humanities for the University of Durham in England has an online site called The Polyphony. If you Google The Polyphony and my name, Nathan Fleshner, you'll find my column. Thank you.